one of my favorite ways to make a video uh, look good, get a little bit more texture, and not make it look so analog, is to play around with um, texture maps. And that's what I'm going to do here. Um, here's a picture of an eagle I found. I think I found it online. At actual size, at 100%, that's what it looks like. Anyway, it looks like digital photography, and uh, anyone who knows me knows that I don't like pure digital photography. I don't like the look. I like the convenience, but I do not like the look. Um, so the first thing I want to do is just give it a little bit of texture. And a lot of this stuff seems counterintuitive. Um, which is fine. So one of the first things I'll do, and this isn't necessarily uh, something you do all the time, I'll just create a duplicate. So I have this copy and I'll have a background copy. So with this top copy, I'll select the filter and I'll do blur average and it averages the blur. Now it's kind of a green, really close to gray color. Matter of fact, if we look at it, here's the color. So it's not a lot of blue, but red and green are pretty close. Uh, so what we can do, oh, and I'll, I'll show you what uh, what reason I, I do this for, is I will um, put a levels adjustment above that. And these are uh, uh, adjustment layers. Anyway, with the levels adjustment layer, I will, I hope you heard that vehicle, uh, I will grab this mid-range to set the gray point. So by setting the gray point, you'll notice it turns everything gray. But it's just this layer because it's, it's uh, still that green color. Uh, but by turning off that, I've gotten rid of any green tint. So here it is before which I think it looks pretty good. And here it is after, which is a little bit more blue in it. And it kind of, I think it looks a little bit better this way. And that's an easy way to get rid of like, uh, like a color, like if there's a tint on your, on your image that you want to get rid of, but you don't know how, that's an easy way to do it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is start putting text or the, uh, what's called grunge maps or grunge layers on it. And I found this, uh, picture image online. It's a parchment, and I'll just drag it in there. It's a smart layer now. Um, you're like, well, yeah, Dan, you can't really see the uh, the image. But I'll just throw an overlay adjustment layer on there, and it kind of tints the uh, color. But you can start seeing a little bit of the grit and the grime, but. Um, I'm going to go ahead and knock that down, the opacity down to about 25%. You know, like, well, man, that looks horrible. I don't like how that looks. Well, bear with me. And this isn't for everybody. I mean, not everybody likes this sort of thing. Um, the thing about grunge maps is you can pretty much use anything. So let's go ahead and take this grunge layer. And we will, oops, there we go. We will spread it so it covers the whole thing. Once again, we'll do an overlay on it. And you know, like, oh, that looks horrible down. Bring down the adjustment on that. Um, so it's starting to look a little bit more interesting. There's some texture, and I like that texture. And here's the thing, too. Um, when we're done with this, we can create an alpha channel that will show that we can kind of show the original bird through there. But I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to use one more piece of texture or a grunge map, which is this metal. And if we go ahead and stretch it, and once again, we'll use our overlay, start getting this really interesting texture that I really like, maybe 25% on the opacity there. So, but if we take it all off, you can see What's going on there? Now the other thing I like to do is, uh, and I forget the, the term for it. It's a common term, and I'm an idiot for uh, 
uh, not remember what it is, but I am going to create a uh, some guides which will put these little blue lines around the outside. I'm going to create another layer right here, and um, I'm going to go ahead and use our Eclipse tool, and I'll just put it in, in this corner here, and with those guides, it snaps to the, the cursor will snap to those guides, and I will drag it here, and it will create a circle that fits in there automatically. And then I will select and invert the selection. So uh, this might not make a lot of sense, and especially if you don't know Photoshop. Uh, basically, what it means is if I'm going to do, if anything is going to happen, it's going to happen in these outer layers. If, if, if I uh, if, 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 <laughs> if I select uh, invert again, then it would invert the selection, and everything would happen to this inner layer. But I'm going to go ahead and reset my colors, and then I'm going to go edit, fill, foreground color. And you're like, oh, well that's kind of neat, I guess. Oh yeah, no, but that's not what I want right now. What I want to do is use our blur filter and Gaussian blur, and we will just ramp that up pretty good. There we go, and then we can knock that down to about 50%. And the other thing I like to do is add a little bit of noise to that. Add noise. Maybe not that much noise. Maybe about 10. So we start getting this really, really interesting um, look here. Now, like I said, maybe this middle one is just a little too much. What's that set to 25? This is set to 25. I might bring that up to 30. But this one, I like the grunge and this, the crackling, um, but maybe not so much in the middle. So what I can do is I can use Control and hover over this layer and click, and it'll load this selection again. And then if I select it and invert it again, um, then I can go to this grunge layer. And, whoops, uh, <laughs> I inverted it when I shouldn't have, but that's all right. Uh, what we can do is image. And uh, whoops, make sure this is selected. Then we'll go to image. I think it's layer or is it image. What we don't want to do is invert. The funny thing is, that I'm just going to use a uh, keyboard shortcut, Control I. Um, there we go. That looks a little bit better because we still get that noise and that that texture that I love. And this, I'm going to maybe do 75%, or maybe 50, or 60. So it's starting to look more interesting. It's it's how I oh it's I don't know how to describe it. It just it looks appealing to me. Um, I'll get rid of the guides and so um, when I do get images or whatnot that I like to maybe add a little detail to, um, then I like to do that. And what it really shows is when I do uh, something like. Uh, uh, like a photo montage or something like for example I'll load this in there and I made this and you can see the the grunge and the dirt and whatever and of course this is a photo montage so you can see where I painted in all the fire add the nice little laser beam um, if I had to do it over again I would have rendered the light on this side more than this side um, but it was quick and easy um, but I like doing photo montages like this, and I like adding the grunge layer. It gives it that gritty, almost grindhouse look. Um, if I was doing this, you know, for somebody, I'd probably take a little bit more time, did a little more color correcting, correcting and color adjusting to, um, you know, get these trees looking better and maybe match things a little bit better. Uh, like for example, when I pull the mat, you can see. Part of the sky from the other picture in the trees over here um but yeah these are just different elements these this layer of trees in the front here are different from this layer of trees in the back which is a different element than this mountains here and uh the sky was something entirely different uh this is a small town street and in the back here these buildings are from a different small town and this building was a burnt out world war ii building 
that I found online that I just kind of painted in explosions and stuff. So, I mean, and then, of course, you got to paint in the light effects that are kind of bouncing off some of the stuff. Uh, but I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, another example would be this Nevis Guard thing I did for Lance. Um, it's a, entirely a photo montage. Matter of fact, let me grab the uh, actual PSD document. Oops, there's the uh, depth map. And we don't want that. So there's the J or the PNG I uh, saved, but here's the actual uh, Photoshop document. Of course, we can turn off Nevis Guard. And I like how uh, the little starburst happens right there. Um, we got this layer here, which God, I wish I remember what they called that, and it's a common term. I'm just an idiot for not you know, remembering what it is. Um, the grunge layers. So we have, believe it or not, we have runic. Some ruins, runes, if you actually look at it, and I turn it on and off, you can see the, maybe you can't, you can kind of see the runes being drawn on it. So um, this is concrete for, that was laid over the ground here. And if I take it off, you can see where, you know, it just kind of goes away. Um, so we'll just turn that off. Then we have blur noise, which basically is I made a bunch of noise and I blurred it. And it kind of gives it an interesting texture. I like that. And we have this top strip here, right up here, which you can't really tell. Let me turn these other ones on. You'll see kind of a band that goes across there. And... Uh, and turn it on off and maybe you can see that it's just a um, I believe it's just a strip of paper like old yellow paper that I um, I'm using a soft light blending mode on it and it's set to 50% opacity now if we go to here we have a rust and I've got a black and white filter on it um, if I take the rust off again you see some of the texture and the detail leave the picture and then I have this metal grunge that brightens it up a bit. Again, it's, this is an overlay and it's at 25%. Let's turn off Nevis Guard real quick. We'll turn off all this stuff. Um, and then I have the runes, which it's easier to see when I have all the other grunge layers turned off. And the thing is, is the grunge layers, they kind of just... <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, they kind of just tie everything together. And it looks fantastic. I love the look. And then, okay, so we, we've got all the grunge layers here, and I, I've turned them all off. So let's look, now we have a hue and saturation um, adjustment layer here. And if I turn that off, you can see where I desaturated the ground. There's the alpha channel for the ground and the trees, actually. Um, so we'll go ahead and turn that. So. <laughs> We're getting kind of the basic raw image here. Now here's the guy. Take away his shadow on the ground because that ties in really good. And then we'll take away the dude. There's his shadow. Um, there we go. And then on the ground here, I have trees. And yeah, like I said, I different photo elements. And you can see a little imperfection where the hand is here. I turn off the trees, you'll see where I cut a piece. There's, I think there's a house or something here, and I just kind of cut it out. But you can't really tell. It looks like part of the actual image. But if we turn that off, then we have space. So let's go ahead and take a look at space. I have a galaxy here. Turn that off. And then I have stars. And there we have it. So I started with the stars. And basically what I did was I used black and filled the whole thing black. And then I put a bunch of noise and used a level adjustment to, well, I did a blur on it, and then I used a level adjustment to pull the white stars out of the whole thing. Then I added a galaxy, and this is from NASA, I believe. Um, it's using a screen blending mode. But it looks really, really good, I think. And then the planets, ah, uh, yes. The planets. Um, 
this is a hue and saturation for the water world because uh, nose guard there was a water moon that everybody was after and I could have done I could have rendered something in 3d and maybe that would be something I would do but I thought for a quick excuse me quick and dirty water planet that's what I would do so we'll go ahead and take the hue and saturation off that so it's not you know if it looks brighter you can see it raw we'll pull the water planet out of there so uh, then we have a desert planet, which if I get rid of that, then I have an atmospheric glow. So boom, 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 boom. So there's our, that was the second thing I built for the planets. Now, ground. Um, so the first thing I did is I, um, I think I found this land somewhere on the internet. And you know, I'm not selling this, so I don't feel bad about using this image. But if I was going to sell it and use it for some sort of monetary gain, uh, I definitely would not use it. I'd go out and take my own picture. I know there's plenty of places in eastern Montana that have roads like this. Um, trees. Uh, I found this off a texture site, believe it or not. Just, um, so I can use this all I want. Um, but... You know, it's starting to come together, very bright and vivid, very bright and green. Um, but then we need to bring in the dude. So uh, the guy was from a photograph of the Depression in the 30s. And since this movie, it's a movie, um, takes place in the 30s, or at least I think that was the original intention, I figured that would be a good idea to do that. And of course, this is a black and white photo. And uh, it doesn't really go with color, but that's fine because that's where the desaturation comes in. And when you desaturate it like that, you get a little bit of color, a little bit of green and stuff. But for some reason, it, your eye kind of, it works with your eye to, you know, ah, maybe there's some color in there. Maybe, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, then we go with the grunge. I'll go ahead and turn off all these things. And grunge is just preference. Uh, so, a matter of fact, I think one of the first things I did was add this metal one. And, of course, it's at 25%. And then I added the runes, I think. And then I added the rust. And then I think it went accordingly. Uh, the top strip, which I'm actually really happy about, um, is, I think just to add something interesting up there. It was more of an experimentation. Of course, then I made some noise and I blurred it. So now it's up there. And then um, the concrete right here. And so it looks, yeah, you start getting that, that grungy texture in there and it starts looking really good. Now to tie it all together, we have this little doohickey. God, I wish I remember what those were called. Oh, it's just bugging me. And then we put the uh, text in there. And then for Facebook, you can upload these things with a depth map. And a depth map is just basically a grayscale image that looks like uh, that. And where it's gray, you know, the darker the color, the further back it's going to look. So with, fa with uh, Facebook, you upload an image with one of these um, you know, you upload this image, and then you'll also upload an, a separate image with this grayscale, because you're going to have to save that as a JPEG or a PNG, PNG or whatever. Um, yeah, then Facebook will combine it into a 3D element. And it's not 100% accurate, and I saw a bunch of, when I did it, I, I saw a bunch of weird stuff, but uh, I don't know, it turned out okay. But with the depth map, uh, let's turn all this stuff off. Add space, which is this black. We need to add the desert planet, which is just a gray globe with uh, some, some blur on it so you get the atmosphere. We need to add the water planet, which is a little bit closer, so it's a little bit lighter gray. Maybe a little blur, but uh, blurs don't... I found out you got to be careful with the blur on the depth map because it blurs into black. So instead of just standing out by itself, it kind of blends in with the background. It's like it's just blending in um, the trees which are a little bit closer and then the ground, which is just basically a gradient. 
matter of fact, I think I did the brown first, so I can pick the um, this top color and use it for the color for the trees. And then the dude, got to figure out where he's in with all that. I didn't want him white or all the way white because if then it would look like he was way closer to the camera than he actually is. And then I did have a version with the title, but it did not look good. Uh, once again, blending, some, how, somehow the blending didn't work. So uh, anyway, that is how I make my photos look a little bit more interesting for those of you who want to know. Uh, goodbye, and I'll talk to you all later, I reckon.